Children's programmes begin on BBC One in two minutes with Play School, after which at 4.20 there's a double dribble riddle with Captain Caveman. The final edition of the picture puzzle series Jigsaw is at 4.30, followed by Newsround Extra with John Craven and Paul McDowell at 5 to 5. And finally at 5.35, Paddington goes underground. But when I started, we were in vision, we were vision analysis always. Things were perhaps less slick than they are today. Now we do a self-op. We're disc jockeys with pictures, if you like, and we can put up any one of a dozen pictures, the symbol, the network clock, various breakdown captions, fault captions, program delay captions. We do all this at the push of a button. The BBC television announcer is the unseen frontman of a large and complicated enterprise. One, zero. <laughs> The presentation department runs the two BBC networks, making sure the programmes run to time and providing the information and trailers at the junctions between programmes. It also performs the most obvious of the BBC's public service functions, transmitting the weather forecasts. And because there's always a vigorous public response to the output, presentation mans the telephones. Hello, duty office. I see. It receives about 300 viewers' calls a day. There are no rest days, not even on public holidays, television's busiest time. The hundred odd staff work a permanent rotor of three weeks on, one week off. We work as operational teams, taking a Radio Times week, which runs from Saturday to Friday. We agree the bill times at about two and a half weeks before it goes to press. In the intervening fortnight, we're looking at the ideal placings for trailers. Uh, we're seeing where possible operational problems might occur and seeing where timings might be tight. It's our job to carry out the intention of the BBC as published in this magazine which the public get. There can be no question of just dumping our programmes on people's doorsteps. We have to work to a, a fairly strict timetable, remembering that every viewer who buys Radio Times or a daily newspaper or watches our own summaries of programme highlights, menus as we call them, has a copy of that timetable and is relying on it. Making trailers is a constantly rolling operation, requiring hours of viewing and selecting to get the clips right. Yeah, okay. So, after why they call me the brain, put an edit in fairly tight on there. Another half second tight. Like TV commercials, it takes more time and resources to tempt the viewer with trailers than their length would suggest. Just why they call me the brain. They call him the brain. Now, John, you understand just why they call me the brain. I think in the 1980s, we were in a pretty competitive situation, and uh, we'd like to maximize our audiences. One, we try and fit the trails to the programs. I'll have a reveal on that side of the end, I think. If it's a uh, hard documentary, you would try and faithfully reflect that documentary. Rambiti. If it's a comedy, fairly obviously you, you play it as a comedy trail. It's certainly not appropriate to go for the hard sell all the time. The years I've spent as a copper, I, I think every minute's been worth it. Five, oh, four, three, 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 the caption, and I'll bring the caption in after, because it comes up in black. Opera's a reasonable example. You're not going to get enormous audiences. Uh, three million would be very good indeed, perhaps, for an opera, but certainly those would be a committed audience, and uh, to sell opera like a packet of cornflakes would be very silly indeed. But we think we can get perhaps a few more people interested than, than, than would if you, if you didn't tell them. Zero. Another Blue Peter If you're not careful, you can end up by, between each programme, telling people that the next programme but one is marvellous. One just does have to be selective. Camera three, could you alter your framing a bit? If you just come back, pull back a bit. Pull back a bit more. That's it, fine. And camera one, could you go in a bit tighter? Yeah, that's lovely. Fine, thanks. And I have an out time of 1859. Eight, 1859. Mm -hmm. Okay. At 9.50, in Root's tension mounts at the plantation. The baritone Eric At 4.30 each afternoon, the editor of the day holds a team meeting to finalise the announcer's script and time it to the second. There are some junctions which we must make, for example, if we have to meet another channel. We may have to meet 
ITV for a party political broadcast. We may have to meet one of our own radio networks if we're doing a music broadcast. Sometimes we're taking Eurovision. Uh, there may be prestigious programmes featuring the royal family, so those are important. We like to get to those on time. Last night, Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, visited the London Coliseum to mark the golden jubilee of the English National Opera. But the unforeseeable can upset this meticulous planning. Some national or world event might demand a sudden change of programming. You can see a tribute to the late Jack Warner as Dixon of Dog Green in the story... Or the producer of a live show may want extra time and ask for an overrun. We may refuse an overrun. Um, if a programme does then overrun, we have to talk to the next live programme that's available or possibly drop a few of our planned trailers and try and get back on schedule. If a crisis situation occurred, say something like the ending of the embassy siege which happened recently or the death of a prominent figure we may have to consider putting an extra news flash or news report at the next junction we may even decide to interrupt a program although the occasions on which we do that are, are fairly rare even without a crisis running the network is a complicated job particularly at the junction before the 540 news on bbc one the 11 regions opt out for part of a minute the London end marries up a trailer from a studio, including a live voiceover and announcements from continuity. Then the regions rejoin London for the news at exactly 5.40. Four nine seconds. So that's down and up nicely to a 10 second clock. That will uh, bring us up to the news on time at 54.00. The news reader is Peter Woods. News are due to run at 52.50. As yet, I have no idea what the last story is. Uh, and they sound as if they're dropping stories left, right and centre. So, stand by. From BT5, 9, 6, 5, Fade. Take on. Three seconds. And there we end children's programmes for today. Fade. Opt out regions. Zero. A new series of It's a Knockout begins tonight on BBC One. Just to remind you, 10 second dots. <laughs> Trails running 49, so it's out at this 49. Outwards are tonight at 10 past 7. News reader is Peter Woods. Is this cruelty to budgies? Find out in It's a Knockout tonight at 10 past 7. There's a lot of it. That's it. 10. It's now 5.40, time on BBC One for the evening news with Peter Wood. Lead sound. Cut. They're running 12.50. News out at 52.50. Thank you. It's a complex and costly operation. Ideally, if we've done our job properly, you shouldn't know we're here at all. Uh, but I do hope that this particular edition of Did You See isn't by mistake last week's being repeated, or next week's coming a week early, <laughs> and that it runs to time.